Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Saturday Night Edition. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Me and my main man, the Transformer, we're going to get it popping tonight. And we got some, uh, well, almost an exclusively NBA show tonight, but um, we will finish off with a Dallas Cowboys topic so we can uh, get, get some NFL love here because, hell, we're still right in the middle of uh, football season. So um, before we do all that, Transformer, what's good, man? How you doing, brother? I'm maintaining, man. Maintaining. How's your day? Oh, man, my day is filled with a whole lot of military stuff. It is our four-day drill weekend, so it's a long military day. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's so right. I came home, had enough time to, like, at least take my clothes off. You know what I mean? Oh. Put some new clothes on and then sit down. And before I knew it, oh, it's podcast time, baby. <laughs> why Why you can't say, man, I, I came home, I changed out my uniform. You all here talking about I came home, got to take my clothes off. Man, you think we want to hear that, man? You I said I came want? home. I didn't say come to your house and take my clothes off. I'm just saying, man, you could have worded that better, man. I, you know, we live it. We live in the pause life now. So you could have worded guess what? That. Hey, man, I'm in my <laughs> home, okay? <laughs> what more do you want from me, Bruce? All right, all right, all right. What do you want from me? <laughs> Stang, man, what's good? What's good, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> How you doing, uh, though, bro? You doing all right? Man, I'm, I'm, yeah, man, I'm maintaining, man. I, I think um, I think we got another good show lined up for the people, man. So uh, you, you know how we get down. You know how we get down. Um, probably want to give it a couple more minutes, see who else pops up in the chat. Uh, G, G's not going to be here with us tonight. He's uh, obviously as well um attending to his military duties so respect due to both of y'all for that my time is over <laughs> um, you know. i got three and a half years man i'm catching up i'm trying to catch up i hear that i hear that but yeah the reserve thing wasn't for me, man. <laughs> was not for me but active duty was good active duty was good but um yeah so we definitely got some interesting stuff going on in the world of sports man the nba is kind of what are we getting into the second week of the nba here right third, third week Third week. week. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Third week. Not bad. Not bad. So yep. the NBA is doing this the thing. most has been played like six games so far. That's six, right. That's right. My team. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 hard though, man, to uh it's, it's hard for I think it's hard to really get into the NBA right now with, with the way things are. And again, you know, we're right in the middle of college football, we're in the middle of the NFL, so it's hard to really devote that attention to the NBA unless, like, you know, basketball is your number one thing. But yeah, um, we I definitely mean, we're gonna show us some love today, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I agree. Um, basketball's always been like that for me. Um, in that sense of that, you got 82 games, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. things don't really pick up until you know after um the Christmas. Honestly, if you want to mm -hmm. look at we look at it like that, you got the Thanksgiving game, you got the then you got the Christmas game. Then once Christmas kind of rolls around, mm -hmm. at that point. The NBA can pick up a little bit more because now everybody's gunning for, uh, you know, higher seeds and stuff like that. Then the all the mm -hmm. All Star break comes in like a month after that, and right. then that's when it really gets hot and heavy. But after that, you know, high school football is over, uh, college football is wrapping up, um, Super Bowl is in February, and then at that point, that's when the NBA gets its, its true spotlight. So yeah, um, no doubt. No similar doubt. to baseball, man. Baseball, what do you got? Like 160 games right. a year. Yeah, but it's like over, that. so we don't even have to talk about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, man. Go Dodgers, by the way, man. Go L.A. Dodgers. They won the uh, eighth championship World Series. Let me say it like that. World Series. Uh, you know what? Nah, respect due to. Okay, I'm like, what you really ask for? Is that like I said, the Lakers? Because won that. I'm, I'm not a, nah, I'm not a baseball guy, but I wanted the Yankees to win, though. So mm. respect due to the Dodgers, though. Respect oh, no, I was pulling for the Dodgers. I've been pulling for the Dodgers right. for years. Okay, all right. So. But, um. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get started in a minute here. But before we do, you all know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't 
can't wait. Can't. The modern NBA, right? So, okay. Um, Laker Nation, when you called in earlier, you said, you know, I'm old school, right? So this is a topic yeah. that's near and dear to my heart, right? So I have a very difficult time reconciling the modern NBA. Like, I understand that it's more business focused than ever now. But I have a, my biggest difficulty in reconciling the modern NBA with what I know is that I keep getting told I'm just an old head hater and the players of today are so much better and so much more skilled and just better overall. And the NBA is better now than it ever has been. And I two just things can be true. that. OK, so we'll get there. Two things can be true. Transformer. You're absolutely <laughs> right. No, no, you're right. But, Not messing with you. Dude. Go ahead. I, really, I, I, I totally disagree with that. Right. Because. Um, and, and we'll we'll get to it, but one of the things that I always point to, and that this is very uh, endemic to this particular discussion, I always say that today's players, they are supposed to be bigger, stronger, faster, more athletic. They yeah. have better nutrition. They have better sports science. They have better anatomical science. They have better sports medicine. All of this, right? But, but, it seems like they're always injured. They always can't go. They're not as physically tough. And that's not just today's athletes. That's today's people on the whole. Like the example I always give is I'm not as tough as my dad was, much like he wasn't as tough as his dad was and so on. Right. Because the more convenient the modern world gets, the easier it is, the more things that are available to us to make our lives easier. We don't develop re the, the requisite toughness. Right. We don't yeah. have it mentally as much as as our previous generations nor physically. I get it. Right. OK, cool. Now, that said. When it comes to this basketball thing, it's really tough, man, because like I said, people are always, you know, the league so much better, so much more skilled, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yeah, nah, that's really, that's not a good look, right? So um, how did this come up? One of the big things is that, you know what, let, let's, we'll, we'll go to the the Embiid in the second part of this topic. So um, I was listening to, what is this, the, what is it, is it the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast? Was that it? Give, give Me the Hot Sauce, yeah. Yeah, so the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast, if you're not familiar, is hosted by uh, former Chicago Bull World Champion um, Ron uh, Harper. And, no, no, it's uh, Stacey oh, King. Uh, Stacey King. Yeah, yeah, my bad, Stacey my bad. King. And Ron he, Harper was on that episode. I'm sorry. Correct. correct. Um, former Chicago Bull Ron Harper uh, recently had. Um, he was recently a guest on the show, and so I, I have a snippet here, and um, he. Ron Harper's a little bit tough to listen to. He's got a speech impediment, so just be a little bit patient with that. But he um he was asked how he likes today's, if he likes today's NBA. So let's hear his commentary. We'll come back and talk about that, and then we will go on to uh, Joel Embiid, which is another part of this topic. But let's go to the first part of it. We were talking before we came on about the state of today's game. Most games turn into three-point shooting contests. Teams are shooting 40, 50 threes. What is, uh, do you enjoy today's game, and what, what are your thoughts on the way the NBA has evolved? No, yeah. I don't enjoy today's game. I, 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 really, I really tell people this, and they tell us that us old guys hate on what today's ball game is. If you can really understand what the game is, if you take 100 shots, and you shoot 63s and you make 20. That's yeah. a very low percentage. If you shoot 62 and you make them 40 to 45, that's a high percentage. So they got these analytical guys who ain't ever touched the basketball or play. And you want to tell us how to run what the game that we do? Steph Curry didn't ruin what basketball is. Steph Curry and Clay Thomas can shoot the lights off the basketball. If every team had two of them guys, right. we can talk about this. <laughs> yeah. But when you're shooting 32%, 30, 28 from the three point line, and you still out there jacking up <laughs> threes, and <clears throat> I'm your coach, you're going to hear this sound. Eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody coming out. Eh, eh. Somebody <laughs> coming out. Let me talk to you, buddy. Let me talk to you, buddy. As, as MJ say, you're playing hard, but you're damn, you hurt me. Yeah, yeah, you're playing hard, but you're hurting us. You're hurting us. I need you to give me some two pointers. <laughs> I need you to give me some two. I need you to play some defense, give me some two pointers. I don't need you going three for 12. Now, if you're going to make eight for 12, shoot them. Well, we're talking about you making four for 18. The ball just sucked and shot 61 threes in the first game. That's yeah. like me and you going to play horse. At this <laughs> spot. And we're going to see how many threes we're going to shoot and make. If you shoot 61 threes, God damn it, you better make half of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. But they end up with like 28 or something. 
Yeah. The Celtics? Well, yeah, yeah, they, they, were, they tied the record. They tied the record yeah. of mates. But, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but today game, and everybody run the same offense. Yep. Draw and kick, draw and kick, face, draw and kick, draw and kick. You get right in front of the rim. Yeah, throw it to the three-point line. Yeah. Yeah. Or a three on one break, right to the three point <laughs> yeah. line. Oh, yeah. man. Hey, you got a three on one break and shoot a three. You better go in the hole. Yeah. Oh, you're going to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now checking Damn. in. Now checking in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, I don't, I don't mind, but better go in the hole because we can get a two point for sure. Yeah, three three on one. I, you see it every night. It'd be three on one, and no one goes to the rim. They just run right to the three point line, and they'll miss it. And you got nothing out of that that trip down the floor. And they think that is cute. Yeah, they think it's cute. Like, oh uh, no, nah, I'm not. Nah. I don't. I, I don't know about you guys, but I take a two pointer all day. Me too. I take two pointer all day. But you know, to, you know, today game there's there's no inside. It's just all outside game. It's no. It's only if you could do it, uh, you get two points that way. But it's it's no it's no diversity in what the game is supposed to be like. I'm 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 pretty sure James A. Smith is rolling over in his. Grave, <laughs> All right, Transformer, I'll let you start, man. What, what did you have to say about um, Ron Harper's commentary? My bad. Uh, now I want to first and most importantly respect Ron Harper for the fact that he's still out there, uh, you know, doing these interviews, having these conversations. As you guys know, um, he did have a stuttering issue, and this is developed from childhood. So that's all his confidence. So anybody with anybody in their family with stuttering issues, it's not a laughing matter. It's not nothing to be making jokes of. Um, that shows mm-hmm. surreal. Uh, it's he still shows surreal uh, confidence and less fear about the 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 flat the the flack that he'll get from you know having that speech impediment. You know, people have their own you know psych- psychological or you know mm-hmm. you know problems or issues that they deal with. So big shout out to Ron Harper and the fact that he you know continues to have interviews despite the speech impediment. So first and most importantly, secondly. The man was right on the money, okay? Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are two anomalies of the NBA that just so happen to become teammates and shoot at a very, very high percentage. The NBA, uh, for some odd reason, coaches, high school, college, well, not, not necessarily in college. They really don't do this in college. But high school, social media to the NBA developed this brand of three-point shooting, right? Steph Curry made it popular to do so, but nobody is truly a Steph Curry, right? Steph Curry shot that way at a very, very high three-point percentage. And then you got like, you know, Luka Doncic. At, look, as of today, I will I will give you this. I think uh, Jason Tatum shot like one for eight, one for nine from three. He was one for seven for three in the first half, right? If you, if you can't shoot it like Steph, then stop, right? And that's a coaching thing. I'm with right? you. As a coach, you can you can shut that all down. Look, mm-hmm. you get four three attempts. If you're two for four, you can shoot another one. But mm-hmm. if you're one for four or oh for four, stop shooting it, bro. Stop it. Stop it. Let that be secondary. Develop a, 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 a pump fake drop to the basket. Do something else. Because right now, one for nine ain't going to cut it. One for nine almost got you beat by the uh, Charlotte Hornets. And this is me talking about Boston, right? For right no, no, now. no. I get it. Because I get that's, it. I get it. that's what's something I, that, that, you know, popped up on my radar when I was looking at the uh, the, uh, the the third quarter comeback that the Hornets was trying to put. But it's it's a huge coaching issue to the fact that the coaching needs to stop it. Fellas, fans are going to celebrate it, right? We want we, we kind of want to see it, but we also just want to see basketball too. Mm-hmm. Everybody doesn't need to be mm-hmm. going out here going one for nine. Uh, De- uh, uh, White, Derek White, four for 13. Nobody wants mm-hmm. to see that all day. Right. We, we don't want to see that all day. And, you know what I mean? It, but go ahead. If, my bad. If we're fair, right, the Celtics were the best three-point shooting team in the league last year. I get it. And but they're so I say that to say that's why they have the the green light to continue to shoot. And most of these teams are being coached this way, right? The analytics part, uh, part of the front office is telling them, hey, get up as many threes as you can, because just by the sheer math of it, eventually you're going to hit some and uh, you have to make less threes than you have to do twos to win the game. So it is frustrating. And then Ron Harper made another really good comment when he says um, everybody plays the same way. Like there's no diversity in the way because, like he says, either driving kick or it's uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Pick and roll. Right. 
look how many offenses in the modern NBA start with a high screen and roll at the top. It's crazy. Or some variation of uh, pick and roll on the wing. Like everything is about pick and roll and hunting the quote unquote mismatch. Well, if all of these players are so much more skilled, which I absolutely do not believe it's a lie. And I'll get to that in a second. If all of these players are so much more skilled, why do they always need to hunt a mismatch in the pick and roll? Why can't they take their guy and get a basket? It doesn't make sense, right? But they're so much more skilled, but they always need to look for a mismatch. That doesn't add up, right? And so let, let's real quick, let's talk about this whole more skilled business. I've said it time and time Uh-oh. again. How Uh-oh. much more? What? No, no, that, they, they got you started. That's, no, that's no, the no, topic no, not, right there. Nah. But real talk, how are you more skilled? <laughs> how, so so what is it? In, in the mid-90s, uh, the NBA, I think, on average as a league, shot about 33% from three-point land, right? And so, all right, cool. The, these guys weren't shooting threes nearly as much. Um, the three-point shooters were mostly guards and, and specialists, right? Okay, cool. So now, now the modern NBA averages about 35% as a league from three-point. So all these extra three-pointers they're shooting, all these extra threes they're shooting, and the percentage has not significantly increased. But what you're seeing, so you believe that today's players are more skilled. Why? Because... Um, a center can go out and shoot threes regular with regularity. Okay, cool. Can that same center go down on the block, raise his hand, get a post entry pass and score over either shoulder? No, most centers can't do that. Right. We know Embiid can, we know Giannis can, we know AD can, and is AD really a center? I, I think nah, he is, he's but like he's a, also, you know, four, he's a four or five, five type guy. Right. Yeah. But, but the point is he, he can five, play both. Yes. Yes. Five, yeah. But we're talking offensively. Most of these quote unquote bigs have no idea what to do with that. And the point guards who are supposed to get them the ball can't make a post entry pass. So you're not more skilled. You just traded one skill for another. And now let don't get me started on today's guards and today's players have so much better handles. Do they do they or are they allowed to carry and travel like they can definitely we definitely allowed to carry and travel? Thank you. And I'm not saying that, they, that, that none James of these Harden. guys aren't nice. <laughs> I tell you all the right. time, Bruce, what I tell you, Jackson. the heart and rule. <laughs> um, Go ahead. um, Edward Jackson, you're hundred percent right. It drives me crazy. How many threes they shoot. Yeah. We and just talked just about that. Yeah. The entire league. But, but yeah, I, I agree with you, but not just them, the whole league. Um, because if you want to see Bruce get mad, watch an NBA game with Bruce and watch somebody have a breakaway, <laughs> get all the way to the rim and kick it out for and a kick it out three. for a three. I'm like, yeah. God damn it. Just finish at the rim. You know what I'm saying? Pike get the foul. Or, or get a line. line. Do something. Right, yeah. right. And so, uh, pardon my language, y'all. But it, it's really, oh, great point, Brandon, the lack of a competitive spirit. That's that's something else. But, you know, with, with the money being what it is, man, it's hard to change that. You don't you don't have to be a competitive person or a psycho to get the money um, nowadays that guys are getting. Even, even bums are making more than, uh, like I said, I was listening to my audio book on In your dream. earlier. And uh, <laughs> shout out my main man, Bruce. Um, yeah, but I was listening to the audio book um, about him earlier. And I think at one point, like when he's at the height of his career, he was making like $6 million. $6 million. The average bench player makes like $10 million a year in the NBA now. I mean, so Inflation plays a lot in that, but I get Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Inflation, the TV contract, yeah. so on and so yeah. forth. So yeah. I'm, exactly. I'm not knocking yeah. him for getting it. My, my point is when the money is like that, it's hard for dudes to be hungry and mean and grinding. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that that's a great point, too. Um, Chuck says player movement also makes it hard to hate each other. Yeah, it doesn't allow it AAU. doesn't allow those I rivalries to develop. Oh, a was a big one. basketball. It, yeah. it doesn't allow the rivalries to develop because, you know, guys are constantly playing together on the same yeah. team. Um, like I made this uh, I made this comment the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron had a camp about 10 years ago. Devin Booker. Jason Tatum, I think it was uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan. It was a bunch mm-hmm. of like players in the league now at his camp. So like you saw that at an early age mm-hmm. before college in the midst of high school, right, these right. guys are already playing together, right? So it's like you can't really develop that 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 Magic Johnson, Larry Bird type vibe because mm-hmm. Magic played over there, right. Larry played over here. That's right. We met at the top. Mm-hmm, and who mm-hmm. was the better who was the better player right you going to find magic out. or bird we're going to find mm-hmm. out the nba right. happened mm-hmm. hey guess what we're going to find out who's better magic johnson right. magic johnson's lakers 
Larry mm-hmm. Bird's Celtics. Mm-hmm. We're going to meet at the top, and we're going to figure it out. So AAU taints all that because a- if AAU is back then, I'm pretty sure Magic and Bird would have probably been on the same squad on one Maybe. of these AAU teams. The Maybe. only time that happened, they they played together on, uh, I think, a, U- a USU USA. 21 team. Yeah. And um, they were saying that uh, the story goes like that team would be getting blown out, and Magic and Bird were on the second unit, and they would come in together. Clean them and up. they would bring it all the way back. And then when the second unit went out, they would start getting blown out again. Then they'd bring that second unit back in. But but anyway, I, I get your point. And AU yeah, does right. have a lot to do with that. And real quick, not to let it co-opt the discussion, but um, going back to LeBron, um, Carmelo Anthony, uh, I don't know if I did this show solo or if you were there. Carmelo Anthony actually talks about it, how from the very beginning. Yeah, I was there. LeBron was, yeah, LeBron was trying to, you know, make these team ups. And I'm like, come on, man. But anyway. Um, yeah, so the, the desire for that competition is just not there. Um, Brandon Bryce says the rules have changed to facilitate scoring, but yet no one except a handful of players actually has a bag and can play team ball. They all want to clear out and go one on one. No, yeah, you're right, you're right. But but even with the clear out, Brandon, they always want that, they always want that pick first, right? They don't want to just because even with this so-called bag, how many players in the league do you know nowadays that really have you know one dribble, two dribble pull up? can get to their spots and score quickly without dribbling the ball 15 times and running out the entire shot clock. It's crazy. So, you know, pull up. yeah, like there's not a lot. I'm not saying no one has it. I'm saying there's not a lot. Hey, he, hey he's doing it. I see him doing it more. I, I said there's not a lot. No, no, I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> I'm just, just trying to think of some players. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying no, to think no, of some no, players. My fault, my yeah, fault. Yeah. I didn't mean to do no, that. You good, you good. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, uh, so, it's just, I don't know, it's frustrating. So this whole uh, more skilled and all that, man, I, I could talk about that all day and all night, but the more skilled thing is crazy. Um, So here's another piece from uh, the Ron Harper interview where he was talking about uh, Michael Jordan and Kobe. And obviously I really enjoyed this. And to me is back to the same thing, how somehow LeBron has managed to jump Kobe and insert himself into this pause, into this uh, GOAT debate. But let's hear what Ron Harper had to say about it. Now, now tell our listeners, because, you know, not everybody got a chance to play with MJ and play with Kobe. Tell a little bit about your experience playing with both those guys and, and what, how close actually are they and what separates the two? Well, rest in peace to my boy Kobe, man. He, he probably as close as anyone else to ever going to be competing with MJ. Uh, he was a very complete competitor. And so he can pattern his game, walk and talk like MJ and be like MJ. And uh them two became special close at the at the at the at the end of my career. And uh it was very when you watch MJ and you see him, it's like the, the same thing. Uh what was what what I tell people what was separate Kobe from MJ. MJ was about two hundred and 30 pounds. Kobe was about 210. And yeah. you know, the physica- the physicality that MJ played with on the offense end and the defensive end will wear him will wear him down some. But but as far as athletic wise, the same fadeaway, the jump shot, the mid-range game, Kobe had all of that and will compete until the end of the day. And in love to play every day, all day, like MJ. Wow. Yeah, so so you love that. And and again, don't get me wrong, we know how hard LeBron works on his body, but it's just I don't know. And and it's not to turn this into LeBron Kobe, but whenever I hear these stories, I hear the the bird stories and the magic stories of the Isaiah and the Mike and the and the and the Kobe's, and I'm like. Why do these stories not exist about LeBron? Like, you just don't hear these things. It's just weird to me. But, you know. Um, no, nah, no, nah, your phone not tripping, Brandon. Uh, Ron Harper, hey, he has a speech impediment. but um, Yeah, he has severe stuttering problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not a problem, but a condition. There you go. Yeah, he has a condition that works. Yes. Condition, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, I mean, you just, I don't T-Moo know. Timu Jordan uh, is crazy, Bruiser. That, that is crazy. <laughs> That is, I don't, I, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that at all. But, so, all right. So the main, uh, to me, the main impetus for this topic, right, was we heard Embiid say that, um, it, it, oh, well, the quote was we attributed go. to 
I didn't actually hear him say, but the quote was attributed to him that, you know, if you had to ask him, he would probably never play back to backs for the rest of his career. Now, crazy. Before I get into that, yeah, that was bad. But before I get into that, remember what I said earlier, in fairness, the media has a lot to do with this. And because why? When we start ranking these guys, rings are such a major factor. You think yeah. MP, MB doesn't have to hear every day how he's the only MVP who's never been to the conference finals? You don't think he's got here every day like, hey, when are you going to get it done? Blah, 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 this, that, and the third. So yeah. I I get it. I understand it. Um, Sports T, what's good? Good to see you. Didn't even catch you in there. What's up? What's up? Uh, it's my homegirl, Dominique. Good to see you, Dominique. Appreciate you. I keep forgetting yeah. that she's Sport T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's doing it. Um, but yeah, so you know, you you uh you listen to what you had to say, and it's like, so yeah, where was I? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. But back to MB. So MB is talking about how you know if if it was up to him, he wouldn't play back to backs for the rest of his career. And I'm like, Yeah, freaking serious. And part of this that now was crazy, is the money that we were just talking. It was crazy, right? Part of this is the money we were just talking about. And beat is a dude who I think has made almost 300 million dollars in his career now, including the new extension thank you sports team we're doing all right we're doing I mean, all do right. That. um no, you good um yeah he's made almost 300 million dollars in his career and that includes the new extension he just recently signed so um i think i i, I think it's problematic hey uh call it from virginia man hang on hang on we're getting there we're getting there we didn't open up the phone lines just yet i know you're anxious we didn't forget you so yeah um so what happens here is uh people really started getting on uh mb for those comments that he made pause and let's hear what uh uh kevin garnett and paul pierce had to say on uh kg certified ticket in the truth discussing uh and beats comments on you know not playing back to backs check it out what do you think is a good number of games he 82 games man this is what the fucking job calls for you're not practicing you're not even playing a whole fucking you don't play in the summer right. i can see if you're playing in the summer you on the playground, you went to the Olympics, then it's training camp. Y'all do 30 days of uh, fucking tour days. Okay, that's when you get rest. Man, I don't want to hear this shit, man. I don't want to hear none of this shit. Motherfucker can sit out a back-to-backs. Bro, don't, bro. Hey, listen, we done with that comparison of the era shit. We're going to respect this era and what it does, and, and that's it. I don't, want, don't, don't, don't compare nobody and none of this shit because I think, you can't. If you ain't played, man, man, listen. I think that's going to hurt Philly. That's going to hurt Philly from a, not even that, but bro. From you, a seeding perspective. Nah, like, it's, it's, you know it's, it's rhythm. One night I got P, next P, night, next night I ain't got it. You might have to put, they might put themselves in the position to where they played Boston in the first round. Bro, it all over the place. Real shit. And ain't nobody, ain't nobody saying nothing. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody holding nobody accountable, bro. So, so not only are they not gonna practice, they not they gonna sit out. I ain't got you in 15. <laughs> I look back up. to back. So that was funny. You see, <laughs> um, funny, and Paul Pierce kept trying to reel him back in. You notice that, yeah. right? Oh no, no, absolutely. Because he, if we know KG, KG, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, KG goes to the extreme. KG goes to the extreme. Yes, because you know why though? Because KG came up in that era with real bigs where you was banging paws and you was putting your body through it, paws. You know what I'm saying? You were really, especially as you know, a seven footer or six ten guy, a seven footer, you were really, you know, you had to deal with that. And he can't yeah. understand why these guys that are making so much money don't have any desire or ability to really um stand in and, and play these games. He can't comprehend it. Sixty million. A lot of dough. Sixty lot of million. Dough. As a bit, as a on like, come on, dog. I don't get don't get me started again, Bruce. Sixty million dollars. <laughs> a lot of bread. Man. Next year, sixty five. Third mm -hmm. year, seventy million. Mm -hmm. And you telling me? Telling me you yeah. not gonna play back to backs is crazy work. <laughs> it's crazy. You telling me mm -hmm. you not gonna show up to work is basically what you sell. You telling me. Because That's right. it's your, it, you, you know, you worry about getting injured, but don't play the game, right? Don't right. play it. So, so Quit, retire, so, no doubt. So, you know I mean? so here's another thing, That's real crazy, quick. Man. Um, Bruce said Braun would average a triple dub in the 90s. I'm gonna just leave it at stop it, Bruce. That's ridiculous, anyway. Um, so, uh, 
You know what? Let's go ahead and take this before we finish it out. I think Dominique is at work, so let's take this call while she can call. Yeah. D, what's good, man? Thank you for calling. No problem, Bruce. Hey, Transformer, what's going on? Did you see your Lakers last night? I'm trying to respond to you, but I have to open up my <laughs> laptop because if not, I'm going to respond as Bruce and it's confusing. Mm. 41. But anyway, yeah. I really did Don't just forget want the to call in because the show is good. You know, um, this this topic about Joel Embiid load management, I'm particularly passionate about it because when you take a look at just how guys have always historically played, you have to keep your body in shape by playing mm -hmm. games. You can't, it, the body is, it trains for what you put it through, right? So you're never going to be able to play 82 games if you don't try. And it is the job, right? So you signed up and you're, you're getting paid to play 82 games, but you get to be a part-time player and the mm -hmm. 76ers and the NBA accept that and they right. never used to accept that. Right. You know, and I just think that it, think about it. That $70 million paycheck that he's going to get is more money than guys made back in the day for their whole career. Yep. Some people. Yep. Magic's, right? Magic's I don't even know that. if Scottie Pippen made $70 million. He didn't. Magic's deal that everybody went crazy over that was the largest recorded deal ever in sports was 25 years, $25 million. Everybody went so nuts that's over why that. I have a big prob that's why I have a big problem with it. And so let's just say, okay, inflation, $25 million today is maybe $50 million. Let's double it or let's even triple it. Mm -hmm. Joel Embiid is still making in one year more than that for some players' total body of their career. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I have – I'm not going to sit here and say that Joel Embiid is not truly injured. I'm not going to say that he isn't – suffering and mm -hmm. he's not healthy i i'm gonna i'm gonna own that i'm gonna say you know what he's probably right he probably truly can't play back to back the knees he's never in shape to begin with but right no play. but guess what he should do but guess what he should do he should retire because mm -hmm. you've made the money that's right you're guaranteed in this contract get yeah. off the floor mm -hmm. fans yeah, don't retire. deserve this in the basketball mm -hmm. You know, teams don't, teammates, pe you know, what Kevin Garnett didn't even talk about is what about the team, the team culture and the morale? Mm -hmm. How would you like showing up for 82 games? Be, yeah? No, no, Transformer was saying he said that same thing. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. The team, like, go ahead, Dom. Good. Showing up 82 games, right? And your star player who's supposed to be your leader can't do it. That's and right. isn't doing it and comes out publicly and is just fine zero remorse zero shame he's completely shameless about it mm -hmm. because this is a normal thing now guys yeah. used to wear playing as a badge of honor yep. and now it's almost like you know what oh well i'm just not going to be available i'm making all this money i can do whatever i want and it's all in in the in the name and in the face of greed Mm -hmm. It's all about a paycheck. It's all about being able to extend your career out to 20 plus years. And I am so tired of it. And I'm yeah. not going to stop talking about it. And I just want to shout you guys out for talking about it and telling the truth because it's really important. Yeah, we appreciate no, no, no. that. Too. I agree. Uh, to your point, Dom, I had this conversation with Bruce. I believe it was last week. Mm -hmm. um, to that exact point, the team, right? The team looks dead at you. You're the leader. You're mm -hmm. the alpha. You get paid right. $60 million dollars to be the leader the alpha the best player on the team you can't now go to tyrese maxi on a play and just because tyrese maxi gave up in the fourth quarter like ah man i'm just tired you can no longer go to him and be like yo bro you got to treat every quarter like it matters treat every mm -hmm. game that's like right. it matters Nobody you lose all that credibility that's right great you point. lost it because mm -hmm. at this point be tyrese turned around and goes Joel, didn't now. you just sit did you just sit last game Mm -hmm. Okay, don't tell me about my credibility and me working mm -hmm. hard and battling every game when you literally just said you can't play back to backs. So who's right. fighting? Who's fighting for the team? But yeah, I agree. It's just think about it though. Are the 76ers going to make it out of the second round? Let's be for real. Probably not. All those yeah, moves that they made to try and to so try and create a team that right. I could challenge Boston, right. but yeah. It's tough. It can happen. They're still not going to get out of the second round if they even get out of the first round because their mm -hmm. star player isn't available. Right, right. Right. So he's putting it. So you're taking off. You're doing all this resting. And then when you have to play playoff back to backs or, you know, the, the strenuous moments in the playoffs, because even though it's not back to back days, 
it's still tougher play. Yeah. So no, your yeah, body is going is. to be put through so much more. You're just going to turn around and get injured again because mm-hmm. you can't get into shape. Joel yeah. Embiid is fat. Let's be for real. Players today are showing up to the NBA with a dad bod, so of course you're going to be injured. What do you expect? Yeah, but what, what I'll you know say what is, I mean? not that I'm comparing them, but what I'll say is kind of like Shaq, if you're Embiid, you know that nobody in this league can guard you. So it's like, why should I why should I kill myself to, you know, get in the gym and, and look like D-Rob or look like Dream? Like, there's, there's no there's no need for that because even in my current shape, nobody can deal with me. But, but he doesn't least realize. Shaq was available and on the floor. At least his time I and attendance was the floor. And additionally, Shaq did not come into the league fat. We have players that have no, I, I, I literally coming. They're showing up to the NBA mm-hmm. as a rookie and you are fat. Yeah. How? How is yeah. that? How is that even possible? Because you didn't get drafted you by the Heat. Take a look at Alonzo Mourning. Take a that. look at <laughs> David Robinson. Yes. I mean, but that was I a different the, league. The worst that it got, yes, but the worst that it got, in my opinion, yeah, was like Tim Duncan. Then you see Carmelo Anthony come in. He's a little bit chubby. You know what I mean? Um, I don't, I don't football, think he was. I, uh, he was I overweight, though. Carmelo Anthony was, he was – I think Carmelo Anthony was a low-key dad bod, and he took yeah. off many defensive possessions oftentimes. He would be – look, as a Knicks fan, I have seen him, like LeBron is at 40 years old, kind of oh. hanging out at the other side of the court to get those three points because he didn't even run back on defense. Mm-hmm. New York and Melo was 30. And tore him up. New York fans <laughs> tore him up in the newspaper for not yeah. getting back well, on defense. Well, you know, bad. there's a lot of players but who don't get back on D. Real they, quick, they um, were, Rocky, that's a great saying, point. Like, what happened? No, I was saying Rocky you put a comment. Oh, okay. Rocky, oh, you didn't hear me say that? Military, not a good example. I was like, due to military yeah. standards, yeah. Yeah, that, that is, yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, I didn't military think standards, you couldn't go. But, but regardless, though, no, he was on uh, one of the comments was David Robinson was in the military. It's not a good example. But I was like, um. Uh, it even doesn't with matter, that, though, no, no, that's what I was saying. He was still his position, right? Mm-hmm. He was power forward, whatever the case may be. So, like, yeah. you know, he, it's just guys showed up outside of David Robinson. You take a look at players that were making way less money that's right. and had way less resources, that's they right. worked a lot harder. Mm-hmm. That's all that I'm saying. And I just think for the amount of money that these guys are making today. They should they should take some pride and some honor in what they're doing and gladly retire and and feel and they could still feel like they stole something. You know what I'm saying? I, like no, yeah, seventy million dollars, you're going to get that whole contract. What is he going to get? 40, 50, 70 out of these next couple of years? How many years? No, left uh, 60, 65, 70. Yeah, he just extended three more years. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so sixty-five and then seventy. Retire, Joel Embiid. You do not need. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to keep milking it. Well, he because you're not going to the finals, and it's going to be disappointing for Philly. The whole I, I promise you, Philly uh, fans are going to wind up hating him by the end of this. Yeah, I was about to say he wants to win, but he doesn't want to do what it takes to win. Yeah. And I think that's that's two different things. But I, I, I wanted to uh, tackle on, on you, he's just oh. not a good enough player. I've seen him and what he does in the playoffs and in the fourth quarter. Regular season, he's great. He is not a postseason player, and he will disappoint Philly just like he always does every year. Tyrese Maxey is the dog, and you're, and he's going to have to be the number two to Joel Embiid, somebody who plays half the time. Make me understand how that's going to work. Well, I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. But, D, I got to let you Paul go. Paul George, um, big, con- big contract, can't show up either. Yeah, so, yeah that's Thank you one. so much, um, Bruce. Thank you so much, Transformer. Have a wonderful Saturday. Great show. I appreciate Absolutely. you calling. Thanks so much, D. Appreciate you, Dom. No problem. All right. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Hey, uh, caller, caller from Virginia, hold on. We're, we're going to get to you. We're, we're not. Um, we, we took that because the last caller, I believe she was at work. So she uh, took a second out to call in for us. So caller from Virginia, hang on. We didn't forget you. We're going to get through this segment. Then we're going to open up the uh, lines for the rest of the callers. Um, we, we still got some more stuff to um, to discuss in terms of this topic. But yeah, um, so Embiid, man, you know, he says that. And then, you know, typical of his generation, he gets upset when other people respond to that. So let's hear what Joel Embiid had to say about that because he was not happy. So let's check it out. Oh, extremely difficult. I think everybody that knows me knows that. Okay, yeah, I would love to be out there every single, yeah, every single, every single game. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate that you know some of them are not as lucky as others uh, to be, you know, 
part of every single game. Uh, I wish that wasn't the case, uh, but it's not for the lack of trying. Uh, you know, it's tough. Like I said, mentally, um, you know, you can play, but still trying to, you know, get yourself mentally right uh, to to push. Um, but. Yeah, but like I said, everybody, every, everything is trending the right way. And when, when, was it when was it decided between the Olympics and today that you would be taking this approach and missing these games to start the season? Uh, it was never decided. Uh, like I said, it's been everybody has been on the same page. Uh, if your body doesn't react well, and you know, if your body your body tells you one thing, and you know, there's you know, there's I mean, I've I've done it, you know, from what I can tell you, I've been I broken my face twice. I came back early with the risk of losing my vision. Uh, I had broken fingers. I still came back, uh, so I'm not gonna see him be like, uh, like. You know when I, you know when I, you know see people saying he doesn't want to play. I've been way too much. I, I've done way too much, you know, for this city, and you know, putting myself at risk, um, you know, for people to be saying that. So I, I, I do think it's, it's bullshit. Uh, like that dude, he's not here. Marcus, whatever his name is. I've done way too much for for this fucking city uh, to be treated like this. So. Um, done way, way too fucking much, but like I said, I wish I was as lucky as other ones, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm not trying and, you know, I'm not, you know, doing whatever it takes to be out there, which I'm going to be here pretty soon. So, man, this, this is frustrating, right? So I get it. You you broke your face twice. Okay, respect due. But I know MB doesn't think he's the first big man that had to wear a mask in the league. Or, or wear goggles. I know he doesn't think that because my he guy. Had a great game. Jordan had a great game. He wore, he wore him. Kareem wore him. I mean, uh, Moses Malone wore him. Ron. Kobe wore a mask. Dwayne Ron Wade. Wore a mask. The, thank you. you. We can go down the list of the <laughs> all-time great players that have had to wear masks and have had to wear goggles. Like, come on, man. Yeah, Kyle Hamilton, this. his whole – I mean, not Kyle, uh, Richard Hamilton, his whole career. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct, yes. So, like, we, we have to stop this. We have to. Like – I, I don't – and then to say, well, you know, all the, everything I've done for this city, really, what have you done for this city, man? You haven't gotten them out of the second round. You didn't even True. play your first two years. Come on. The, Meanwhile, the thing about this, this – the thing about this, he says, all, yes. all the things I've done for the city. Right. Uh, broken hand, all that. Mm -hmm. Don't say that after you just told the public that I'm not going to play back-to-backs. Great point. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because at this point, you wouldn't have said that you're not going to play back the backs. Mm -hmm. You would be saying, I'm going to try to play 82 games, 83 on a good year. <laughs> if they add another game, I'm going to play 83 games. And mm -hmm. then you could say what you just said. But don't turn around after you just said, well, do the injury. I'm not going to play back the backs. But yeah, then turn around cool. everything I gave to the city. Then uh, that's not everything because everything is 82 right. games. That's right. 80, everything is playing back to backs. Everything mm -hmm. is putting everything out there on the line. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, come on. Every player gets hurt. Every athlete gets hurt in the league. Broken right. hands, broken bones, broken fingers, right. sprained knees, spra yeah. like, cat, like all that, bro. We yes. get it. We get yes. it. We're not saying you trying, but you telling us to the, you telling the public what you not going to do when you're getting paid $60 million to do so. And mm -hmm. I just spent $500 on a ticket to get in a section down there next to you. To see you play, but but since it's a back to back and you in my city, I can't see you play, right? Then right. you're not doing everything for the city, bro. You can't do right. that. No, you can't I'm, do that, I'm with bro. You. I'm with you one thousand yeah. percent. And you, you know, I'm an Embiid fan. You know that, but I can't stand this, and it's disingenuous. And I, I don't want to call him a liar, but it sounds like lying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, come on, call man. Call a spade you, a spade. You got you got to do better than this. It is it's black, super. It's black. It's super, super frustrating to me. And I'm like, you it's super, you know what? I'm 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 gonna let's let's do this. We got some more commentary. <laughs> well, let's hear let's hear what K Perk had to say. And this this will be the last thing, and then we'll we'll close out on his comments and then we'll open up the phone lines. But let's hear what K Perk had to say 
regarding uh, Embiid and his commentary. Bob, when you get drafted, when you get drafted and you sign contracts to play in the NBA, you sign to go play at the elite level, and you sign to put your body on the line. It's part of it. But, but that's but, what he's done. He I'm saying done and you got to continue to do it. That's he, why you see so many guys like Ray Allen who can't go out for a run right now because he sacrificed his body, and now it's affecting them long term. But it's part of it. This is what you signed up for. And so – Perk kept it very simple. He kept it very short. This is what you signed up for. And guess what, though, right? Nobody's saying Embiid hasn't had a lot of injuries and all that. So first thing, I know everyone's not the same. I know everyone's not the same, but I also know you've heard me reference this. Bird was literally in traction before games later in his career, in the second half of his career. And he still went out there and did the work. Granted, everyone's pain tolerance is not the same. Everyone's injuries are not the same. But I say that to say, he was out there in traction. We saw, you know, a lot of times he had to lay down on the floor because his back was so bad. And I'm someone who has had back problems. And I can tell you, when oh, your yeah. back flares up, you cannot move. So to think that Bird was out there, not just playing, going up and down, but playing still at a, at a, a freaking all NBA level, at a Hall of Fame level with a jacked up back, like you don't, I'm sorry, Embiid. In, in a league that's so much less physical, you just don't get to complain like that. I'm sorry. You just Jack don't. I ate him for lunch. And, and, right. And and the last thing I'll say before I give it up to you and then we'll open up the, the phone lines, I bet he don't have any problem cripping his injured butt down to the bank to take care of his money. What you think? Uh, I think he runs. Uh, <laughs> there you go. And, and, and then they have it's it's a, stop it. It's a long gallop. Your knees. Oh, it's okay. I have to it's check okay. my my balance. It's Sixty million <laughs> right, coming right. this year. That's <laughs> a lot of that's a lot of incentive to run fast. What's that like seven hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars a game? Like, come on, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro makes mm-hmm. almost a million dollars a game. But if he gets hurt, I mean, if he misses eighty, and if he misses twenty-three games, he would get a million dollars a game. Mm-hmm. If he plays, but no, I say it all to say, uh, Dom, when she was on, she uh made mm-hmm. the comment about uh, you know, the weight and stuff like that. And I mm-hmm. always reference this Zion Williamson's contract had a weight clause. I didn't know that. Okay, owners, y'all gotta wake up, mm-hmm. GMs, mm-hmm. y'all gotta wake up. You guys are the change. If you're gonna pay these guys 60 million, put clauses in them in them contracts. Right, if you're overweight, I mean, you sort of the camp overweight. That's why that clause is there. Back your back yeah. yourselves up, right? That's right. They're fighting to get these um no trade clauses when mm. y'all need to be putting weight clauses in your mm-hmm. contracts, mm-hmm. right? Injury clauses. You know who has like, them? The Miami Heat. Miami Pat Heat? Riley. Pat everybody Riley don't play that. for the nope. Pat everybody play who played for Miami talks about Pat Riley does a weigh in every week. Yeah. Yo, the league would be in trouble if Pat was the freaking commissioner. Oh man, it couldn't right. have that. Would be it couldn't have that. Pat Riley, ain't, Pat trouble. Riley ain't playing these games. Yo, them, hey, them, absolutely not. Hey, yo, them CD, not, not CD. What do you call it? CDAs? What do you call it? Uh, CDA. Them CDAs would oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. be they'll be through. They'll mm-hmm. be through, right? Yeah. But I say it all to say, like I said, Zion Williamson has a con has a clause in his contract that requires mm-hmm. him to maintain a combined weight and body fat percentage of no more than the 295 pounds that is in his contract right right if zion if if if, if luka Doncic shows up the camp and he's looking chubby that clause mm-hmm. is in his contract right if joel and b shows up overweight that clause is in your contract mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right if you tell me you can't play back to box that clause is in your contract y'all they got to get smarter y'all increasing yeah. the money for less pay for less right. work for less i work. wish i could go right. ask for more money less and work do less yeah <laughs> right no it, doubt. it just no doesn't doubt. make sense man no it doesn't no it doesn't all right real quick let's go ahead and make sure everybody um if you haven't already in your chat please hit that like and subscribe button especially that like uh the, i don't know if you know how it works the more the more likes a, a show or a, a live stream gets the more youtube pushes it out it's all part of your algorithm so we really would appreciate if you would hit that like button for us and of course if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel we see you here we appreciate your activity, y'all live in the chat tonight, but just help us out with that. It helps a lot. All right, let's go ahead and open up the phone lines, 904-219-8264.
Um, first things first, call it from Virginia. I know you've been trying to get through. You've been waiting to talk on this topic, man. Hit us back right now, and then we'll go from there. Call it from Virginia, 804 area code. Give us a call back. Let's hear what you got to say on this. Let's get it. Yo, Thomas said he decided to get put to sleep. When he yeah, I saw through. that. I saw that. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, it's no, not good, put though. me to sleep. You know, I can't take that. No, put me to sleep. Give me the melatonin. Right, <laughs> Call it from Virginia. Ant, what's good, man? Hello. Yes, sir. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess this is, um, I was listening to one other caller you brought up. Uh, he basically <laughs> said everything I was about to say. Really. Okay. Uh, uh, but I guess I'll put my little two cents in there, really. Please uh, do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so more so with the Will and Bead, you know, with his comments about how much he really sacrificed for 76ers, the organization, the city of Philadelphia, you know, uh, how, you know, he had many injuries and whatsoever. Comments even when he said he'll probably never, ever, ever, not just for this season, but never win, never play back-to-back -back games. For the that, rest that of his season. career. For the rest of his career, not this season, for the rest of his career. Like I stated this before, I feel like the media overhypes him over too much, way too much now. They, they keep trying to push this narrative and this notion that he's a top five NBA basketball player in the world right now. In this moment, I don't even think he's probably top 10, you know? Yeah, but, many players who are younger than him that surpassed him, like a Luka who went to Western Conference Finals and now a Finals with one broken leg. You had the new, who was I called, the savior of the NBA, <laughs> Anthony Edwards, the Ant-Man who went to the Western Conference Finals in a harder uh, um, uh, conference, which is the Western Conference, and took his team to the Western Conference Finals again and, and also beat the um, the champion, uh, which was never Nuggets last season, Anthony Edwards, Tatum, who went to the Finals. And this narrative that, that ESPN, the media keep pushing that, if he's healthy, if he's healthy, well, you know, that, that notion has to be... Um, kind of killed off at this moment because when is he healthy? Does, does he even mm. prepare himself or his body mentally or physically to, to be healthy? You know, because I do believe you got to do things after practice, before practice, before a game, after a game to, to um, you know, make yourself more so kind of healthy to prepare yourself for, you know, around 82 games. And, I, you know, I get it, you know. No one's not saying you have to play all 82 games. But you, you don't even want to miss in some games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm paying you $60 million. I need you every game. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> you, you can't play at least. But when you made that comment not playing back-to-back -back games, you can't at least play 25 minutes a game. Right, right. Yeah, you know? at least say that. I like that. At least yeah. say that. At least play half mm -hmm. the game or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is not like the 2000. This is not the Easter Conference in 2011, when at best he had – Three teams who could possibly, possibly, or two, can make the East, can get out the Eastern Conference Finals. The, 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 the Eastern Conference is just 10 times harder now, in my personal opinion. It has, it has somewhat way more competition. Boston Celtics, the Knicks. Um, I was, I was going to say Milwaukee, but that's probably past there. But who knows? They could probably change Milwaukee. Uh, the, the, uh, even it's the, the bottom feeder team, the bottom feeder team we have in the Eastern Conference Finals, they want to somewhat fight too. They got something to prove, like the Charlotte Hornets. Um, 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 the Detroit Pistons in a way, right? Um, uh, what's another team out there? Orlando. Oh, Orlando. Nice. Hey, yeah. Paolo, nice. Oh, yeah. Paolo's nice, Paolo. yo. He's going to be out for a month. In, mm -hmm. Indiana, Indiana in, in some way, a little bit. All, all those teams made moves and got some pieces that they're somewhat of a decent team. And if you're not getting your Asian shoes right, they can somewhat beat you here and there. Especially you don't have um, a team that doesn't have two of their best players. As you can see right now with um with Philadelphia now, they're like right now one to three, one to four, one four. probably in a minute. Against, one four. Oh, they're about to be one to five the way I'm looking against uh, the Memphis game that they're playing right now. Um this you do not want to catch up. Because then be coming back and same thing with Paul George is not a good idea you catch up and win. Because there's only one situation really where where the Sixers uh, is trying to adopt what you know more so what Toronto is trying to do with trying to low manage their best player, not really trying to make their best player play back to back games 
But here's the difference between those two situations. The um the Toronto Raptors only traded about two players or one player, which was like Kawhi Leonard and DeMar DeRozan. So the rest of the players that were like passed out to Yakum, Fred Lee, Kyle Larry, and the rest of the other players on that team, they, they still have chemistry. They still have chemistry amongst each other. Uh, the Sixers team, this is a whole brand new Sixers team. They have Caleb Martin. They just went ahead and got uh, Paul George. They got, went ahead and got um, and Andre Drummond and uh, other players throughout that team to, to build the team for Joel Embiid and Paul George. You know, this whole team doesn't really have chemistry to begin with. And the, the third or second best player on that team at that time in 2019 was Hakan Siakam. He wasn't injury prone. And he was very young for his time. And um, so so that's really why I think like this, this low managing with Willing to be would not work in my personal opinion. I think at this moment, really should just go ahead and straight, trade them as soon as possible. The problem is with that contract and those and that injury history, nobody's taking that. I wouldn't. And I'm an oh, NBA I fan. Agree. I wouldn't if I was a GM. No point. I agree. But I, I agree. look, I agree. The, the biggest issue here is this, man. It's not it's not even that Embiid wants to do this, although that is it. It's that he would be dumb enough to say it out loud. Like all these dudes talking this nonsense, do they not have PR people? Do they not listen to their agents? Like, do they not run this stuff by their agents and their PR before well, they say it? Uh, and Edwards and Edwards talking about nobody had skill other than Michael Jordan and all this foolishness and uh, Jordan and Kobe wouldn't be good leaders today and uh, Embiid coming out. Well, I'll never, you know, if I had to guess, I'd say I'd never play it back to back for the rest of my career. Like, shut the hell up, man. The old, like, like Herm Edwards said, don't press send. And of course, we're using that metaphorically, but don't freaking press send, man. These dudes are all saying dumb stuff. Like, just cut it out. Think before you, you, you come on, man. I agree. The one yeah. that does somewhat tend to have a history of this, especially with um, the Olympic team around uh, when the, the Olympics when he stayed and said, you know, we should not play within the LeBron James system whatsoever, but LeBron James playing better than you. Right, 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 <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Facts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also, the other, the other situation when he stayed and said that um, if, if Jason stayed, if I had the same um, a, a, a players that Jason Tatum had on his team, then, then, then um, wait, what did he say? That? I forgot what the comment was, but he he, he damn near criticized Jason Tatum, who, in my personal opinion, is a better player than you. And when you had the opportunity to beat Jason Tatum, when you was up two to one, I believe in 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 the Eastern Conference, mm-hmm. so uh, yeah. in, in, the, in, in the playoff, you had he beat you. He put fifty one right. points in your head, indeed. He did. You know the media. The one thing I hate about this is how the media hyped this man up. He keep pushing him as he's. Let me let me let me let me stop you. Let me no. Let me stop you. You can disagree with that. I respectfully disagree with you. When Embiid is healthy, he is a top five player in the league, and of course, that's the major caveat. When he's healthy, but when he's healthy, he cannot be stopped. He's got a complete game. He defends. He rebounds. (laughs) You know, this past year before he got hurt, he was averaging a career high in assists. I think he was getting like six assists per game. He can go to the block. He's got a myriad of moves down there. His mid-range game is deadly analytically and just, um, you know, uh, regular numbers. His advanced numbers are crazy. He can step all the way out to three. And as a big, he can shoot the free throws dead eye. There's no real weakness in his game other than clearly he's physically and mentally Help sore. <laughs> right. Help, you, yeah. you know, if you're talking about his skill set, no, he's absolutely a top five player when he's good to go. The problem is he's almost never good to go. That's the problem. Skill set wise, though, inarguable top five. Yeah, yeah. I, I so, uh, okay, I, I'm going to take that away. He does have skill. Um, he, in my opinion, he's the most skilled big man in the NBA. I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. saying he has the best footwork, but he, he's right up there, you know. I think he does. Um, But, yeah, but the way how he's, you know, how he's carrying himself, how he's making excuses. How oh, yeah, I'm with you. Team, how the Philly team built a great team. Um, again, around him with Kelly Oubre, Caleb Martin, mm-hmm. Paul George, they have Maxi. Yeah, they did uh, all they rising, could. Rising superstar Maxi, and I truly mm-hmm. do believe Maxi, he's gonna be the best player on that team. It's a matter of time if your eyes will wake up. My personal opinion. I think uh, you're right. You know? I think you're right. Um, you know, this is bad for Philly, man. Because hey, the Philly fans are quiet right now. You know? But but in the matter, it's just a matter of time before they they turn their back on these. 
you know that that's that's all I'm saying. You know that um uh, yeah, that's that's my only issue with with B man. It, it just it, every year, every year is something, and you damn near got the most deaths in 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 probably the whole NBA, right up there with Boston. In my personal opinion, that's how great I believe they are more in Philly. Um, organize this team to help him lead. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know. I really, I really, I really. You know, I do want to see him play, though. Don't get me wrong. I do want to see him go out there and play, give it all he got. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. I agree. But my last thing I want to say, I just wanted to know what what's the next excuse going to be that the media was going to give him because they're not. One issue yeah, I do, I do have with the media. There's one issue I do have with the media when Giannis. Jason Tatum, mm-hmm. uh, Nikola Jokic, mm-hmm. they, the media was cr- criticizing them in every way possible, mm-hmm. you know. For not getting it done. To, e- e- even though they went to a comp, uh, a Eastern Conference Finals or a Western Conference Finals with like Jokic and mm-hmm. against the Clippers, I think he went to Western Conference Finals. Was it, was it the Clippers? No. The Lakers. It was the Lakers. Um, they still criticized him, talking about he didn't go to the Finals. He's not a mm-hmm. good player. And then mm-hmm. he won a championship. Uh, what's another player? Giannis. He went to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Raptors. Mm-hmm. And he still criticized him saying he's not a champion. He blah, blah, right, blah. Right. And Jason Tatum. They criticized him trying to break up him and Dylan Brown. Yeah. It went, even though he went to the Eastern Conference Finals like three times. Or and he went right? to the NBA Finals. He, yeah. he, exactly. But he stunk it up in the Finals the first time, though. So, got to be agree, honest. Yeah. Agree. I agree. And he went to the Western Conference Finals. And he, and he went to the Finals and won uh, this, this year. Like, mm-hmm. this year. So, so, but with Embiid, you know, they're not giving him that same, that same heat, that same energy, that same uh, criticism that he gets for all three of those players that are playing well, the NBA. You know. Well, I got, I got to disagree with you, and the reason why uh, I think I, I, I got to disagree is this because I think a big part of the reason why Embiid is taking this path and and trying to do it this way is because of the pressure that he's feeling, and the media is a big part of that. Um, it's constantly put out there. He's the only freaking MVP that's never been to the conference finals. Like that's out there. That's a regular thing. And you hear it constantly. And even if they were going to make excuses for him, they're certainly not now since they see he tried to come out and made it clear that he wants to take the easy way or, or, you know, what, what is perceived to be the easy way. So the fact that he came out and made the statement, even if they were going to make excuses and try to protect him and cover him up, cover it up, that's not going to happen now. He he blew his shot at that by, you know, making the declaration that he probably will never play back-to-backs for the rest of his life. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's the problem for the rest of his that's career. crazy word, it, man. It is. But, um, man, I got to let you go, Ant. Thanks for the great call. Yeah. I appreciate it. Make sure you lock in this number. And, uh, you know, we're always here. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, too, so you know whenever we um, drop content because there's, there's times when we just, you know, I go live out of the blue or stuff like that when there's big – news stories in the sports media but thanks for calling man i appreciate it all right no problem good one all right no doubt man okay okay um i guess we can we can take one more call while we wait for transformer to get back i don't know what happened there but um yeah you got two minutes to go ahead and call in we'll take one more oh here we go laker nation what's good hello oh. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you get two calls from me when one, the one show, that means your show is awesome. <laughs> I appreciate um, that, man. Thank you. Tell other people about it. Oh, I do. Appreciate um, that, man. I do. Um, well, first thing I want to say is um, shout out to Vince Carter getting his jersey retired tonight. Uh, okay. Toronto? Yep. Okay. And they're winning the game right now. Okay, there but, you go. Um, Side note, he should not be a Hall of Famer, but go ahead. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't do PC like that. Well, you know what? Let me let me make a correction. Since the basketball Hall of Fame is absolutely terrible and the weakest of all of them, all right, we're good. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, reason why I'm stepping outside. Uh, the reason why I said that is I brought up Vince Carter because of the passion that I've seen is um, when he got in his jersey to retire with Toronto. Um, that gave me goosebumps, mm-hmm. and that's what I want to see from MB, from the NBA players that we we pay to watch and not hear MB crying about his situation. Mm-hmm. Um, because 
hey, what's going to happen with the next CBA is the owners are going to be like, look, we need a guarantee on our investment. So we're going to put these clauses in these players' contracts that they have to, you know, take care of their bodies in the off season, mm-hmm. um, be available, mm-hmm. and play a maximum of 65 games. That's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because they they put that that's in probably. there for them to get the awards. That's mm-hmm. not working, so they're going to put it in their guaranteed contract. There you go. That is, I'm fine don't with that. play sixty five games. You're going to renege at least thirty percent of your earnings. That's right. You, we just prorate it. That's what, you don't make the cutoff. We prorate it. Uh, you know, unless there is, you know, you can get a waiver depending on your medical condition. But yeah, I, I think in general, I like that a lot. Yeah, there is going to be there's going to be ways like to hit injuries. You know. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about that. Right. But, um, but just to blankly come out on TV and say I'm not going to play back to back for the rest of my career, and Terrible. I did this. It's like you're you're basically telling the general public and the and the media mm-hmm. and the fans how to how to view you, mm-hmm. like their opinions of their opinions and wanting you to you know and hold you accountable to be available when. They're paying their hard-earned money to see you. Doesn't matter, right? It's like my body. Hurt. Well, take better care of your your body, right? And I'm not saying that to speak out on the. the I'm not talking out on my neck. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give an example of what happened to one of my kids this season. Our first game. Okay. Kid breaks his nose mm-hmm. during the game. He's trying to get. He's trying to sub back in. I'm like, no, you can take your ass to the doctor. Your nose is crooked. Mm-hmm. And find out he broke his nose. He's trying to come back and be ready for the next game, and he's crying and mad because he can't participate and help his team. Mm-hmm. That's the type of energy that you want from a player, a person that's making sixty million. Well, well so 60. Real, real, real quick, I agree wholeheartedly with that, but I think don't, also don't, you, don't, don't, don't disagree, don't disagree, Bruce. I don't want to. Don't, no. I'm I'm only going to disagree to to the point of uh, what is it? The great um, marvelous Marvin Hagler, God rest the dead said it's hard to get up and run five miles in the morning when you're sleeping in silk pajamas, right? So <laughs> the, the grind, the desire is is not there the same way for the most part in most players when you're pulling in that kind of money. Most of these dudes in the NBA make more money per game than we all make annually. Like, just think about that. Like, so you're like, man, shoot. You know, I'm making 150 grand a night whether I play or not. Like, it takes a very special type of player to still want to go out there and compete and dominate and destroy people and be the best they can be and put on that show for everybody. So I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I love what you said, and I agree that that's the type of mentality you need. I'm just saying for most people, it's hard to have it when you got that type of money guaranteed. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's that that's a, that's a weak man's mindset. Well, yeah. that's that's yeah. why some taking people are that, above others, right? That, that rich man that's, mindset. That's <laughs> taking over the uh, generation. Yes, like, like it, it. I blame the league itself. It's your fault. It's your what was it? When was it pre-COVID? When um, what's what's that role player that signed that um, guaranteed eighty million dollar contract for the Rockets? Who was that? Uh, um, I can't remember. I can't remember his name. That was around the, the COVID area era when they were just throwing money away. Was that Eric Gordon? Was that him? No, it was a big man. One of those. Okay, uh, okay. One of those spot up shooters. What was it? What was the question? I'm sorry, I missed it. Now nah, he was saying oh. around the COVID time, a uh, a role player for the Rockets signed a deal for 80 mil guaranteed. Like he said, it was a big a spot up shooter. I don't. I don't remember who that was. Brooks, Dylan Brooks. I Nah, he's not big. Oh, a big I man. Wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to bring race in it, but it was a white boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really not sure. But go ahead with your point, though. I can't remember. But after he gets on that contract, and contracts start getting ridiculous, mm. and and now you got see all these players making all this money, whether they they play or not. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said, like, you're going to see in the next CBA that these owners are going to be like, we're losing money. Mm-hmm. Um, fan attendance is going to end, is going to go is going to go down because of that. Because it's like 
if I'm if I'm paying if I got, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like this, and then I'm I'm gonna um let somebody else call in. Um, if I'm a season ticket holder, right? I, I'm I'm a regular Joe Schmo working nine to five, but I'm a season ticket holder. I I got and I invest stakes into your organization. Mm-hmm. Like like a lot of these organizations, you know, are open to the public where you can. You know, I think the Lakers is one of them where you can you buy stakes of the team. And I say I buy stakes of the team and I'm a season ticket holder and I come out. And my star player is getting on TV and telling me he's not going to – I'm going to I'm gonna say, well, cash out my stake and, and my stake in this team for whatever it's worth now and give me my, give me my money back and I invest in somebody else. Because <coughs> mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit up here – and just watch and watch Tyre, Tyrese Tyrese Maxey um, play, and it's not fair to him. I'm gonna touch on that in a second, but he's out here playing his heart out, trying to keep the team competitive, and they're losing. Yeah, because he got two of his star players out. I know, um, but and that's one thing where I'm furious about what he said. And I'm like, you're the fucking you're a fucking MVP. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're the you're the franchise. Yo. Your, you just got PG. He got hurt. Like first, first game of the season, he's gonna be out for a while. And you know this. Put the damn team on your shoulder and say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry the load until PG gets out. Keep us afloat because we know the, the the team in our in our rival just won the championship. They're number two in the conference." Cleveland's undefeated. They're number one. I'm going to I'm going to keep my team afloat until you come back and hold it down. And if I'm hurting at that time, then I'll go to manager like, look, okay, um, help me out or whatever, and then take care of your body and get ready for the for the uh, second half of the season. But that's what the that's what um Miss D was speaking about earlier. That's what the off season's for. That's for conditioning your body, taking mm-hmm. care of your body, losing right. weight, right? Like all that carrying all that extra weight on them joints. Shaq was a prime example when he mm-hmm. was getting all the knickknack injuries when he right. played for the Lakers. Right? He complained about, it. and Kobe, you know, told him like, "Dude, lose some weight." Mm-hmm. Um, all that weight yeah, on. The he joints, was like, "But I got you." On that floor for eighty-two games, it's gonna wear and right. tear you, tear on you. Nobody is gonna be escaped. Everybody gets hurt. When a- when it's April, everybody in the league is hurt. No one tells. Right, right. No, um, I hear you. Do you have anything else, man? Before we let you go, I'm just going to say, 82, playing 82 games is hard. It's not easy, but that's why they pay these guys millions of dollars. That's right. Austin that's Reeves cool. did it. Oh God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> man! Don't be hating, man. Hey, it's your it's your fault. Y'all 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 trying to. Y'all, y'all Celtics up here trying to. Oh, we eighteen champs. Y'all, hey, y'all I mean, keep us in your know. mouth. Y'all <laughs> keep us in your rear view. So it's, it's y'all fault. We don't study. We don't. We don't. We don't worry about y'all until it was that's time a, to play. That's a damn lie. That's a damn <laughs> lie. Yo, you know good. And, you know good and well. Y'all think about us just as much as we think about y'all. Come Hell on, no, man. we don't. We got the Celtics coming up, man. Okay, that, let's man, that's it. like Ali and Frazier, Man, you know what the only time, time I ever watch the Celtics game is when you're playing the Lakers. I mean, okay. I don't even think about y'all on TV. We don't. Damn I'm lie. trying to tell you as a as a Lakers fan forever, we do not worry about the Celtics until Bruh. they're guess, number one in the finals. Hey, guess what? And we're not playing them. Well, or I, two, uh-huh. they're on the schedule. Well, I'll tell, that, I'll tell you, you know, what. Ass about the I'll tell you what. The guy <laughs> that I believe is the greatest Laker of all time said he used to get up every morning and check the paper to find out what the Celtics did the night before. I'm he had saying. to play him. His rival was Larry. I'm just, I'm just saying. He's talking about, he's talking about magic because I'm Larry, just saying. Him and Larry, him and Larry were rivals before he college. <laughs> they were rivals from grade school. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying. Hey, so you know, hey, I think Magic knows better than we do whether or not the Lakers. I don't think. think I don't Celtics. think he cared about the Celtics. He wanted. He I wanted to did. see what the fuck Larry did. I mean, obviously he Larry, but they Larry cared about like, the Celtics because I tell you what. Other Lakers of that era, 
they were always they they said it that they were always thinking about the Celtics in the back of their mind is always the Celtics because they got because Larry. They, no, not about Larry because they believed that at the end of every year it was them and the Celtics, and obviously it didn't turn out that way. The Bill and Russell obviously, Wood, obviously y'all had the you know y'all had the benefit of that in the eighties. Was it? Uh, um, do you, you won two out of three final series, right? Against yeah. us oh, at the head. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, Bruce, to get yes, to that point you just made. Yes, sir. Because you already know how I operate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it like this. Mm-hmm. If there's, if you know that you're on the top two teams of the, of the league, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of the era, mm-hmm. and you, you were looking at, okay, so, all right. Oh, I see... Um, so and so is on the on a ten game winning streak. We need to get on the fifteen because mm-hmm. we're gonna see them in the finals, and we need a home court advantage. To that to that to that point that you just made, the top two teams in the league always do that. They always be like, okay, let's see what um like when the Lakers and Kings were going at it, they were like, okay, let's see. Oh damn, Sacramento's on a twenty game winning streak. They're putting up one hundred twenty points a game. Let's 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 just toughen up our defense. Let's keep all opponents under 90 points a game for this for this next road trip. So I know you don't want to give the Celtics any props, and I understand that. I understand that. No, but I ain't we, got nothing to do with the Celtics. We, we, it's it's nah, the nah. fact that what, the what, two best teams in the league that know they're going to battle each other for the title, they do that every, all the time. But that's not that's not what I'm t- – all right, man, you got it. You got it. <laughs> you got I, it I don't know what you're trying to – I feel like he's tapping out, Transformer. No, I'm just saying, man. Like, you see how you see it, but we saw it live here on the Format Podcast. Bruce has tapped out. Tapping out. But I'm just telling you, us Laker, our true Laker fans, mm-hmm. we don't worry about the Celtics until we fucking play them. That's no, that, no, no, those are facts. You're, you're, listen, I don't, Walter, not bro, the only I don't give a I know damn about known. them. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, no. I mean, hey, if you say when so, I, I'm just saying. Y'all are not the only Lakers fans I know or have known. That's all I'm saying. I've they been on this earth for almost half a century. <laughs> they probably <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> Maybe, but they think well, about they, us just like we think about y'all. So it's all good. Now, it's all good. Because you, that's because you they boy. They they talking shit to you. Uh, maybe. But they capping at the same time. They're not worried about the penalties. They just they just um they just um giving you hazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're not worried about the Celtics too. It's time to play them. Right. Ask them, well, ask them how many, like, okay, how many, Celt- got- ask them how many Celtics games they watch a year. If the answer ain't two, then I don't want to hear it from. Them. Okay, <laughs> the answer's two. It's against right. the Lakers. Other than that, okay. you ain't watch those Celtics game. Okay, unless it's in the playoffs. Okay, <laughs> I'm not watching y'all play. I don't want to see y'all succeed. Okay, oh. I think the only time the times I watched the Celtics last year is when they played the Heat because I'm down here in in, in um, Broward County. Okay, okay, um, I'm up here in Duval. In uh, respect. No doubt. Y'all, y'all got hoods everywhere in Duval. Yeah, Duval got a lot of <laughs> I'm, I'm not in the hood. I am in Duval County, though. <laughs> but I'm definitely not in the hood. Nah. Like, wait, was Oakland Johnson? Uh, okay, I'm going uh, to let y'all, I'm going I'm to get off with somebody right, else can, get, can call in. All right, man, I appreciate it. Y'all. No doubt. Have a good one. Thank you. Hey, good job. Mm-hmm. I ain't thinking about the Celtics, man. We it's... don't, bro. When I tell you, bro, man, you we good. Don't. You good. We don't. <laughs> All right, man. Let's. When uh... I tell you, bro, when whenever somebody, man, you're watching a Celtics game, I'm like, why'd you ask me that? You know damn well I'm not watching that game. You know what? The, the season opener. I'm like, I'm not watching that. You know you, what? I mean, you texted me. Would... You was like, you watching us hang that bet? No. I will. I don't yeah, care. That, that's exactly. You know, you wouldn't want to watch the superior team out of time. I get it. I get it. Nah. You know? Yeah. Y'all. Upset have, that, y'all you know? are. Y'all live off that post freaking 1970 aura that Bill Russell got you all them chips. That Bill now Russell's you're like, last but, championship was 1969, man. That's crazy. Yes, and y'all have won seven championships since 19. What that's okay, man. It's okay. We won seven with Kobe and Braun alone. I don't know nothing about 